In this mini projects episode, we'll do a little bit of what we'll loosely describe as engineering and freeform problem solving and just messing around in the garage trying to improve a few things. In a previous mini projects episode, we had a ridiculous fight with this drill to remove its chuck. Somehow the drill managed to survive and we installed this new keyed chuck. There were several considerations when choosing a new chuck, but the biggest reason I went with this one is that it's totally steel, very solid, and with a key, it's easier to really clamp down on things. I'm pretty sure the reason the jaws of the original chuck got messed up was from me over-tightening it. A lot of the original chuck is actually plastic, and while it tightens really nicely for most situations, there were a couple of times where I was trying to drill something really hard with a lot of pressure, or to drill something really grabby, where the drill bit spun in the chuck jaws. And to try to prevent that, there were several occasions where I ended up using channel locks to really clamp down the chuck. Which is probably how I deformed the plastic housing and got the jaws out of alignment. And those are the reasons why I decided to go with a keyed chuck for the drill. It is a little bit more inconvenient, but it's much stronger and much easier to get it really tight. The drill has already seen a lot of use and abuse with this new chuck installed, and not one time have I had an issue with the drill bit slipping. Here is the chuck key that was included with this new chuck. It's a nice fit and works really well, except it's just a bit short. It's difficult, uncomfortable, and even a bit painful if you really need to tighten something down in the chuck. So I'll often end up using an additional tool in addition to the chuck key itself to help tighten things down. Using some sturdy pliers or an adjustable wrench or something like that to give a little bit more leverage makes using the tool easier. But it also makes changing bits out even slower, more unwieldy, and a bit complicated. One really simple way to make the handle a bit longer is just to slip a piece of tube over it. This is just cheap, generic, half-inch, mild steel square tubing, and it would do just fine as a handle for a key like this. In fact, here's a different drill chuck key that I had previously welded to a piece of this half-inch tubing. And using that tubing as a handle works really well. It's a lot more comfortable to use and makes it easier to tighten down the chuck. Unfortunately, I can't use the key I already made in this DeWalt drill chuck because the pilot's just a little too small. There's enough side-to-side -side play that the teeth don't engage correctly and it's just not gonna work. So my original idea was to do the same thing again and take some of this square tubing and weld it to the key that actually fits with our drill. From using it, I also realized that the handle for the other key was quite a bit longer than it had to be and we would make this new one shorter. And at this point, we ran into a minor issue. The handle for the key that came with the DeWalt chuck has already gotten quite a bit bent. The plan was to insert the handle into the tubing with some shims so that it wasn't just the weld supporting all of the load. But with the bent handle, that wasn't going to happen, so I figured I would try to straighten it out. And in attempting to do so, I quickly snapped off the thumb rest. I had the channel locks gripped on the body of the tool, but they kind of slipped more than I thought they would and put some pressure on that thumb rest. It immediately bent, and at that point it was obvious it was going to break off, so I just pulled it off. I really wanted to handle with that thumb rest, it makes it a lot easier to keep the key centered inside of the chuck. So I dug through the tools to see if there were any other keys that would fit well with this chuck. As previously established, our already long-handled key is not going to work. And here is the key that came with the chuck that I just broke. The handle is also even more bent because I realized exactly how malleable it is when messing with it in the vise. This key is a pretty good fit, there's a little bit of play, but that's what makes it easier to use. It engages the teeth well and does a good job of tightening. This is another Jacobs branded chuck key that I dug out of the tool drawer. And what do you know, not only does it work, it's actually an even better fit than the key that came with the chuck. The issue with this one is the knurling holding that handle in place has gotten loose. Which is annoying and could cause it to slip in your hand, which is potentially dangerous. In fact, I was able to just tap it on the vise and the handle fell out entirely. And this gave me a bit of an idea. That's always a dangerous thing to hear. So here we have the head of that key and its original short, loose-fitting handle. And what we have right here is a quarter-inch bolt that's longer than the original handle. It also is almost exactly the right size and can't be threaded in by hand, but I think we could make it happen. 
Of course, I could always use the original handle and weld it into that piece of steel tubing and it wouldn't matter that it was at some point loose. And honestly, I think the reason I went the way I did with this was just because I wanted to try something different. And while we're at it, why not make two different keys? I already broke the handle on this DeWalt one, so why not knock that out and do something with this too? This one, we just gave a few sharp taps with the hammer and it dropped right out. The hole for the handle in this appears to be the exact same size as the other one, although it has a little bit more material around it, so I think it'll have a better chance at holding up to our quarter inch bolt handle. I briefly attempted to use a tap, but it quickly dawned on me that it was not going to happen. As seen here, the steel is quite hard and there's no way a tap is going to work. And at this point I figured, eh, what the heck. Even the grade 8 bolt isn't as hard as the head of this key, so let's go ahead and use the impact gun to force it in. It took a lot of downward force to get it started, but once it did, it threaded itself in no problem. All of that dust coming out is from the threads on the bolt. You can see that the threads are a little bit worse for wear, but it doesn't matter because the bolt doesn't have to be removed and it sure isn't going anywhere. This one is about an inch and a half longer than the original short chuck key handle. It should also be quite a bit stronger than the original handle. But before we call it finished, there are a few finishing touches. First up, we'll cut the head off of the bolt. Then we can use the belt sander to smooth over that edge. In fact, to get a nice spherical end, we'll use the drill. So we'll tighten the chuck key into the drill chuck with another chuck key. You know, like you do. Then by spinning the drill, you can get an idea of the kind of abuse this thing often gets put through. We should also be able to get a very smooth end for both sides of the handle. Because of all the weight of the key's head spinning around, it's not the smoothest operation, but it'll get the job done. Then we'll flip the key over and smooth out the threads and the end of the other side. And there we are, here is our long handle compared to a standard chuck key. I used the longest quarter inch bolt I had, but one maybe half an inch or an inch longer would have been a little bit better. Still, even that little extra bit lets you get more of your hand on it, which is a big improvement. The handle is also sturdier than the old one, so if we did use extra leverage to tighten it, we probably wouldn't bend anything and it's less likely to get hurt when we throw tools around. Here's a close-up of the two handles side by side so that you can better see the slight increase in diameter from that bolt. And well, for this key, that's pretty much it. It seemed totally solid, but afterwards I did end up tack welding it to the chuck key head, just in case. This should make the whole assembly just a little bit stronger. And with that, this first key is finished. But as mentioned earlier, I also wanted to try making a second one. And here's the handle we came up with for that. A while back I bought a large assortment of these JEG screwdrivers for quite cheap, and a lot of them are in my car tool kit, but there are some that just didn't really need to be there. Like this one with its Robertson drive. But it seemed to me that a screwdriver handle would make a pretty nice grip for a chuck key. It also helps that the screwdriver is already about the right size and I would probably never use it anyway, so I don't think we're really losing anything of value even if I do manage to break it. The first step, once we've gotten a feel for how long it should be, is to cut the screwdriver to that length. Then we'll take it over to the belt sander and remove material until it seems like a good fit inside the chuck key head. We have to be careful not to get the steel too hot since it could melt the inside of the plastic handle. So we'll have to go slow and keep dipping it in our high-tech cooling liquid. The extra bonus is the zing those steel filings give to your lunch. Once we got the shaft of the screwdriver to approximately the right size, we tried to do a test fit. But clearly it still needed some more work. So after more sanding, we did another test fit. And still a little bit too big. Then I went back and did even more sanding, and this time got a little bit more aggressive when driving the screwdriver handle through it. It was a nice tight fit, it seemed like it was working really well until it snapped the head of the key. Yeah, the steel here sure is hard, but that also makes it brittle. So when you try to wedge something into it like that, this was kind of inevitable. 
As mentioned earlier, the material around the hole of this chuck key was a little bit thinner than on the last one we used. So we we're going to scrap the other plans and just weld the screwdriver in. I went ahead and ground in two flats for a little bit of a thumb rest before we permanently attach everything together. Interestingly, even after all the cutting and sanding and everything, the shaft of the screwdriver is still a little bit magnetized. And carefully, one last time, we will put everything together and make sure the flats are lined up. Then we'll go back to the welder. We're giving this very short tacks and being very careful not to overheat everything because, again, we don't want to melt our plastic handle. After every tack weld, we're cooling it down by dunking it in chicken noodle soup. Uh, I, I mean, water. We're welding the key to the shaft, but also welding all the way across the cracks in the head to make sure they don't continue. Since we're keeping the welds short and the heat localized, I don't think we're going to screw up the heat treat on the chuck key head. And after a little bit more of that, we'll clean it up just a little bit on the belt sander. And there we are. Here is our completed screwdriver handle key. It's definitely a lot bulkier than the other one, so there's a place for both of the keys we made. Also, only time will tell how sturdy this one is going to be. For a little bit of rust prevention and some swanky good looks, we painted the keys with some engine enamel paint. This stuff has a long cure time, but it is extremely resilient. We gave the paint two days to dry, and now it's time to test out our new keys. First up is the handle that we made out of a bolt. It is super sturdy, and I can almost get my whole hand around it. The thumb rest could be a little bit longer, as could the handle, but it's still a much better grip than any of the standard chuck keys I've used. And that bit of extra leverage makes a big difference when tightening down the chuck. So how about our plush screwdriver handle key? This one is extremely comfortable and easy to use. A wider thumb rest would be a little bit better, but as is, it's still not poking into your finger or anything, and it's very easy to get the chuck extremely tight. When putting a lot of force on it, there is a bit of flex. I'm not entirely sure how much of that is the plastic of the handle or the shaft of the screwdriver itself that's bending a little bit, but as long as nothing breaks, and so far it hasn't, it seems like that won't be a problem. Feel-wise, it's actually kind of nice. It's a little bit like using a torque wrench, and you can kind of get a hang of where that bending feeling kind of comes in, which should help keep me from the desire to over-tighten the chuck. I've used each of the keys at least a couple of times, but the one with the screwdriver handle is my new go-to. If I had to go on a critical job and needed to be 100% sure that the chuck key wasn't going to break and really slow things down, or I needed something a little bit smaller, the one with the bolt handle would be the way to go. But for comfort and ease of use, I've been very happy with the screwdriver handle key. So there you go. There are three different options for making sturdy and comfortable longer chuck key handles. Using the customized keys and a keyed chuck on the drill have made things so much easier, I really wish I had just done this sooner. There's no fighting to get things tight enough in the chuck, and no awkwardness of having to use a second tool to add leverage onto the tiny factory chuck key. But of course, the things we've made in this video are absolutely not your only options here. Lots of people make wooden handles for keys, especially larger ones used on drill presses. Another one I've seen done is people take the head off of the chuck key and weld it to a socket. Then you can use it with a ratchet or a T-handle. That would be a little bit much for our handheld drill, but for a large chuck or a drill press I can definitely see the value. I just figured that I would share this process and some of the ideas that we came up with. Just kind of winging it and trying to problem solve along your way in the garage is one of my favorite things to do. And while it doesn't always go this way, this time we came out of it with some useful new tools.